for sure. Phil, before you start talking about ozone, would you share with the group uh, what your daughter's experience has been up there? Yeah, my daughter is a uh, intensive care nurse at uh, Holy Name Hospital in uh, Teaneck, New Jersey, which is one of the uh, big uh, epicenters of this uh, corona uh, virus outbreak. And um, it's a pretty intense situation right now. Um, People are dying by the scores up here. They're all going into uh, respiratory failure. And, uh, and there's ages are, you know, usually, well, typically in the beginning was all we're seeing, you know, the 70 year olds, the 80 year olds are having complex problems with respiration. But now there's a variety of, uh, of uh, patients that are suffering and uh, quite a few are not uh, making it real. A bunch are, but some are not. And she's right in the, in the front field there. She's right in the uh, battleground in this situation. I just spoke to her a little while ago. And a lot of her, um, you know, fellow staff members, physicians, nurses are catching the virus also. You can't be in this environment without, uh, you know, being exposed, obviously, to it. And, but we were lucky in the sense that uh, we've had a lot of tools and tricks that uh, through ozone and vitamin C, that's kept. Your order hemotherapy, uh, which is basically drawing off 50 cc's of blood, 50 cc's of ozone in the high 20 microgram range, uh, mixing that with sodium citrate and reinfusing that back in. She's doing that a couple of times a week. And also 50 grams of vitamin C IV in between. Uh, we also have some homeopathic remedies that she's using and thank God she's been uh, perfectly healthy through those techniques. Uh, as we well know at this particular point, I think we know that uh, this type of virus is a you know phospholipid type of membrane. It's a very fragile type of virus which works to our advantage because it's very susceptible to oxidative stress. There's a number of studies done with just ozonated water unto itself that's been extremely effectual on these type of viruses that they looked at before, the, the uh, COVID type viruses, the SARS, H1N1, very good results. In addition to what's going on right now through friends of mine, connections throughout Europe, especially in Italy, they started, the government has officially started uh, allowing physicians to do major autohemotherapy and um, they're having the reversing the symptomology and bringing these people back from a severe infective states where they're basically the respiratory system collapsing down, uh, doing major autohemotherapy. So it's very effectual in that sense. So that's what's uh, kind of going on right here. The biggest thing that uh, I've experienced uh, through my emails, which I'm getting God knows how many every day, is the big push here is the, the vitamin C, the high concentrations of vitamin C IV, 50 grams in about uh, 500 cc's of Ringer's lactate dripped over about two hours, very slow. Because remember with vitamin C, it's kind of like a Dr. Jekyll and uh, Mr. Hyde. If you drip it too quickly, it's a very strong oxidizing agent, um, but very slow, it has this antioxidant effect. So. I'm not sure it's the oxidizing component or the uh, antioxidant component that uh, seems to be effectual with the vitamin C. And that seems to be a little bit more readily kind of mainstream as accepted right now. But with the ozone, as we know, based on the science and the history that we have, you know, ozone is obviously triatomic oxygen. Um, it's effectual against all types of pathogens whether it's bacteria, fungus, virus, or even parasitic forms themselves. And how does that work? Well, it creates basically, when you introduce uh, oxygen ozone, IV, what you're basically doing, remember, ozone is a biologic precursor. It's how the body responds to it is actually what does the yeoman's work, meaning that once you do the IV or mix it with blood and reinfusing, what well, basically you're doing, you're making customized hydrogen peroxides, okay? Those peroxide forms. And those peroxide forms are actually what kills the fungus, virus, bacteria, whatever the case may be. 
But also what's very, very important as, as the studies are coming out of Italy through friends of mine is that ozone, of course, produces what? Nitric oxide. And it's really the microcirculation in the alveolus that's really being attacked by this virus. So what it does, it's actually the ozone itself is supporting or the peroxides and the nitric oxide, all those components are actually supporting um, revascularization and supporting the microvascularization from collapsing down. That's from the nitric oxide itself. But also, what's also important, which is one of the uh, aspects of ozone, is that it has this unique property when it's introduced into the biologic system, in our system, is that it has this modulatory effect on the immune system. Meaning what it does is that when you say modulation, well, what does that mean? Well, if you're in a high inflammatory state, it tends to reduce the infl inflammation down. But if the immune system is underreactive, it actually upregulates it and brings it back to homeostasis. And the real key to everything, you know, getting through this whole situation is really about the immune system itself and all the things we're doing with the ozone, whether it's vitamin C, nutrition, whatever the case may be, it's critically important that we support our GI tract and the immune system itself. Now, another trick is what's called minor autohemotherapy, which is a very, very simple trick. And what that does, it creates what we call a, you know, a um, auto vaccine. Now, you know, we could be, you know, exposed to COVID-19 and depending on your immune system, you know, if your immune system's up and regulating, doing all the things we love, to, you know, it should love to do, you might have had it, don't even know it, okay? Or you ha currently have it and don't know it. And what's going on now is it is transmitted very easily, and that's part of the problem that this, this virus is very readily transmitted. And they're realizing it's not so much even coughing and sneezing, by actually even talking to people, you can spread this virus. So the beauty about doing minor autohemotherapy, it acts as an auto vaccine because we don't know a lot of times what's ailing us. It could be subclinical, but we still have it and have the capability of spreading this thing around. So we would do wanna modulate and educate the immune system to what's going on. So we have an infective state. We know we start to produce antibodies themselves, okay? And antigens in the blood system itself. So, you know, some of you have trained in minor autohemotherapy. It's such a simple trick, but it's very preventative on what's possibly ailing us. So the simple technique is what you do, and what I recommend you do, you, take a, you can take a five or 10 cc syringe. Take, what we take is a 25 gauge, one inch needle, and, stay, and stick a vein. But first what you do is draw up in that syringe three cc's, of high 20 micrograms of oxygen ozone. So three cc's, okay, of oxygen ozone in the high 20 micrograms. You don't have to go any higher, okay? All right, you don't have to go any higher. You get all the effects you want. Now, once you have that ozone, then what you do is stick a vein and draw up one cc of blood. And don't be like a den, oh my God, it's a little bit more than one cc, a little bit less. Approximately one cc of blood. Take it, you know, obviously pull it out of the vein, recap it, okay, you know, put, cover the wound itself, recap it, and then shake it up, vigorously shake that up. So what you're doing is you're exposing those millions and millions of white blood cells, the eosinophils, basophils, and neutrophils, all those macrophages to these oxidized antigens, which is, in this case, COVID, if you have it circulating. Then what you do is once you do that, take it and inject it back in IM, whether it's in a deltoid or in the gluteus. And that is the perfect auto vaccine. So whatever is ailing you, you know, it will, you know, you'll re-regulate or modulate your immune system. Now I typically use this technique for allergy elimination, seasonal allergies, and also, which works incredibly well, herpetic lesions of the oral cavity and lip. I mean, I've eliminated, it's amazing, eliminated these herpetic recurring lesions in patients by once again, you have to have a little bit of the symptomology or it could be subclinical. And then doing this one simple, one cc of blood mixed with the ozone and reintroduced. So that's one technique. 
One of the other powerful things that you can do as a preventative, okay, since we're kind of, especially in New Jersey, locked up right now, is simple techniques like ear insufflation. You all have those techniques. Once again, to get that stethoscope, once again, in the high 20, high 20 microgram range, and make sure that if you're gonna bubble the ozone into your ears doing the ear insufflation, moisturize it, okay? Because ozone loves to travel easily in a moisturized environment. So, you know, approximately one eighth liter. You don't need a lot of flow because when you're putting the stethoscopes in your ear, all you're creating is a micro niche of ozone at that concentration. So what that does is that, you know, we're de delivering these oh, the ozone via what? The tympanic membrane. And you don't need tons and tons of gas to get in there. All you're doing is creating that micro niche in there and the tympanic membrane will absorb as much ozone as it possibly can. It's self-limited. But the beauty of it is once again, once the ozone gets into the circulatory system, we're creating those peroxides and all the other things associated with the ozone itself. It's great disinfection properties. You know, the vascular beds start to open, immune modulation. So, and the beauty of it, once again, why are all those bugs so susceptible to ozone? Because once again, all these viruses, then once again with COVID or whatever the case, N1, SARS, is all SARS-based, you know, have little to no antioxidant systems in their cell membrane. So they cannot quench this oxidative stress by the peroxides. That's why they're so susceptible to ozone therapy. Now, another big weapon that you have is making ozonated water. There's a lot of studies, I've got a whole bunch of studies that came through, I've been looking at, about the effect of fresh ozonated water on, on viruses and in general pathogens itself on surfaces. If you make ozonated water, all it has to do is if you have an ozone generator, crank that thing up to the maximum concentration of ozone being produced. And the real trick is, is using distilled water, okay? My German friends, and I like to use by distilled water, but that's a little anal right now, if you have distilled water, because remember, ozone is so reactive, okay? Any kind of elements within the water itself, it will react with. And even though you have distilled water, you know, there's still some elements in there, but regardless, okay? It's very, almost impossible to get absolute pure water anywhere. So you have distilled water, and all you have to do is bubble the ozone, ozone, ozone combination, it's always oxygen ozone, in there for six minutes. We did these studies again and again and again. Within six minutes, that water is ozonated and ready to go. So I developed a protocol, especially if you're doing emergencies. It's critical that you have ozone. When we have our emergency patient comes in, one of the first things we do is nasal insufflation, okay? nasal insufflation, which is, once again, uh, taking basically a quarter liter of uh, oxygen, converting it into oxygen ozone in the high 20 microgram range, bubbling it through olive oil. So it becomes what's called an ozonide. So that is a triatomic oxygen attached to the oleic acid, but it's going down through the whole respiratory tract and disinfecting it. Number two, fresh ozonated water. We have, before I even touch the patient, we have them rinse with oh, fresh ozonated water for at least 60 seconds. Take a big gulp, rinse, 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 15 seconds, spit it out, rinse, rinse, rinse again. The ozone in the water is extremely reactive and will clean the oral cavity. Next is putting ozonated water in your dental unit. That is critical. That's part of our standard thing we always train everybody with. Because you know what? The thing that's so dangerous about dentistry right now, and they really, really don't want us to do much, is the damn aerosols. And this is an aerosol-based disease, okay? And their oral cavities flooded, and the respiratory tract and sinus are flooded. If this person's infected, guess what? They're packed in there with this virus, and you start drilling away, hidey ho you're spraying that everywhere, and guess what? You're spraying it on you. And uh, unless you're incredibly in like a, some kind of bio suit, good luck. So that's the dangers of what we're, we're dealing with. So things like fresh ozonated water, having the patient rinse. Number two, having the dental unit with fresh ozonated water in there. Having the patient do it, nasal insufflation it's in there. And these are things that you can do for yourself. So, and what, do you can, what can you do at home? 
you know, if I was, you know, we're kind of locked up here in Jersey and probably around the country too. I mean, we're doing, uh, you know, nasal insufflation every day. We're doing, of course, ear insufflation a couple of times a day, working on our gut, our immune system itself, um, using, you know, you know, using ozonated water fresh on, on countertops or whatever the case may be. And also, which is very important, kind of a nice little trick is that if you make ozonated water, you can do neti potting with it. Rinse your damn sinuses out with the fresh ozonated water. Maybe you can make up the fresh ozonated water, you can put a little salt in there so you don't get that kind of weird burning up in your nose and uh, do some nasal insufflation, not, not nasal insufflation, do some uh, neti potting with ozonated water. That will flush all that out and kill all those viruses themselves. So questions out there. Everybody on mute. Uh, okay, I typed in a question in here. Can you hear me? I hear you. Okay, I, I would love for you to explain why, again, this is new people who maybe don't know exactly what kind of equipment to get, why they shouldn't rush out and get some kind of an inexpensive home ozone generator that does not connect to oxygen and think that is actually going to do some good. Well, you know, the whole basis for ozone therapy, whether it's, you know, incorporated in the dentistry or medicine, it's all based on the equipment. And it's very important to get the proper equipment. We always recommend the company Longevity because we know it's very safe and effective. It's a medical grade ozone generator. The problem with these cheaper ozone generators that you might see typically like Amazon.com or whatever, you're using ambient air. And the difference is, is that when you're doing, you know, medical grade or dental grade ozone, it's pure oxygen being fed into the unit itself. The unit should be completely designed to manage a pure oxygen environment. When you're dealing with these lesser expensive ones, these are ambient air. So what you're doing, other than, you know, you're going to have lower concentrations, but also you're going to create a lot of side toxins. You're going to oxidize the nitrogen in the air, okay? It can make a lot of things like nitric oxide, you know, in a negative way, not the nitric oxide in our body, but nitric type of oxides um, that are, are really more irritating than anything. Well, what's important about investing in a, you know, right now, I don't know if you want to buy, you know, a, a, a dental kit, you know, unless you're trained with it, but you can get a, a decent um, medical grade oxygen ozone unit from Longevity for maybe 1500 bucks within that range. And we will get a higher concentration. It's also important to know what concentrations you're gonna get. Beyond that, it's also what's very important is what the, the unit is made up of. There are different type of units out there. There's cold coronas, there's corona discharge, but the, the element that creates the ozone should be completely made out of quartz. The entire unit should have nothing that's exposed that is not completely ozone resistant. What we typically see in the, in the less expensive units, um, we'll find that there are some rubber components, there's stainless steel per se, um, there's different type of plastics, and ozone being so you know, corrosive that you wind up pouring out ozone with some oxygen, well, some air, that uh, is totally toxic with plastics and uh, rubber and the unit completely melts itself. So the things you look for are really quartz, silicone, and what's called kynar. And kynar is a special resin that we find that we use to make our connections, the tubing that's associated with it. So the tubing coming off the unit itself is really made out of kynar and silicone itself. So you have to be careful as far as, you know, what the unit's made up of. Uh, there are some ceramic induction, induction tubes. There are stainless steel. Just, you know, be careful and, you know, make sure that the manufacturer, okay, can tell you exactly what the unit's made up of because it could be uh, very, very toxic and you're not going to understand how much uh, ozone you're actually going to get um, in your, your water or yourself. Questions? Phil, can you give us a contact for longevity? Is that possible for you to, to type into the Zoom chat that's there, a, a phone number or something? 
Yeah, let me see if I could get it right now. Let's see. It's longevityresources.com. Let's see if I can get it. I can type it in here. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Yeah, you could look on uh, ozonegenerator.com and that brings you right to the longevity site. And that's the safest, you know, ozone generators that there are. You can give them a call directly and, uh, and you don't need to at this particular point, if you, if you haven't really had uh, training as far as dentistry is concerned, I mean, a simple unit, but I think there's one called an EXT150, which is reasonably priced. You have access to oxygen. And so you get the purest, cleanest ozone that there is. And it is a lifesaver, I gotta tell you. I mean, there's uh, other techniques I'll, I'll mention now that you can order a kit from them that will come with what's called uh, rectal insufflation bags. Now, that sounds kind of, funny if you don't know about it, but basically rectal insufflation is another alternative to doing ozone IV. If you're not comfortable sticking veins and going through that bloody mess, a lot of physician friends of mine have turned to rectal insufflation. The studies have shown that it's pretty much as effective as doing an IV. So basically, you know, longevity has the kit, so it can come as a whole kit, because a lot of my patients take those kits as far as the generator and the rectal insufflation bag. And the formulation is pretty straightforward, and the science behind it is very clear. You would take, you know, 250 cc's of oxygen ozone, the high 20 micrograms, okay, 30 micrograms area. And then after your first bowel movement, or if you do an enema, whatever the case may be, you uh, squeeze the, it comes in a bag, you squeeze the, um, the oxygen ozone rectally. And what it is, within three seconds, studies have shown that the peroxides are running through the portal vein system itself up through the liver. So it's an incredibly uh, effective type of therapy that uh, does all the modulatory effect, all those wonderful things that ozone does without sticking a vein. So rectal insufflation, it comes in a kit as a small catheter and you can uh, gas yourself, and uh, I tell you what, that could be very well be a you know, lifesaver. Another trick that uh, is American Academy of Ozone Therapy that we really don't um, promote at all is another simple trick that we used to do a lot of years ago, but we moved away from it um, for technical purposes, but is direct intravenous infusion of ozone. Meaning what you, what you used to do or you can do and in situations like this, we always used to talk in my first training uh, in ozone therapy going back 20 something years ago now was in biologic weapons, okay, which we could be dealing with and just don't know it yet. And basically what it is, is direct infusion of ozone. You take a 27 gauge butterfly, load up a 10 or 20 cc syringe of ozone, once again in the high 20 micrograms. And basically what you do is you stick the vein with the small tiny needle, 27 gauge butterfly, and slowly infuse the ozone gas into your vein. And uh, you know, we've gotten as I've done hundreds and hundreds of those years ago and never had a, had a side effect whatsoever. But the only issue is, is that you, you don't, you really can't calibrate how much ozone is being taken in, et cetera. But I tell you what, in circumstances like this, extremely simple technique, and extremely effective. God forbid you start getting symptomology, all the things we talk about, nasal insufflation, ear insufflation, you can do rectal insufflation and direct IVs of the ozone gas itself. Once again, it's interesting that, you know, you say, oh my God, I'm injecting air into my vein. That is absolutely not the case. Oxygen ozone has vastly different physics than air. Air, once again, is made of 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen. Physics are different. The problem is with air is the nitrogen. It really doesn't go into solution well. 
With oxygen ozone, it instantly goes into solution. The oxygen picked up by the, uh, the red blood cells itself and the ozone component itself disassociates. And remember, ozone is triatomic oxygen. So once the, the ozone is introduced into plasmatic, plasmatic fluids, blood, etc., cetera, it instant, instantly disassociates itself. And that singlet oxygen, the, the, um, the oxygen, the triatomic oxygen goes back to you know, diatomic oxygen, but it's that singlet oxygen that breaks that unstable bond that breaks off, it's that singlet oxygen that creates that big biologic cascade. That's where the really precursor is, that singlet oxygen, what we call a reactive oxygen species, creates those peroxides themselves. And it's interesting that when you have these uh, peroxides start to flow through and you get the killing of the pathogens themselves, but also that modulatory effect down in the immune system, the immune system has these quiescent proteins within the cells themselves that become activated when they sense oxidative stress. And this is where these systems start to upregulate. We know so much biochemistry, I can go on for hours with it and put you right to sleep. But now we know the mechanisms of what we're dealing with with oxygen ozone therapy. Stimulating quiescent proteins that would do these modulatory effects, upregulating the antioxidant systems in cells and creating those deeper vascular beds themselves. So, and another trick is, is you know, very simple, uh, just good hydration. Keep well hydrated over the next few weeks. I mean, concentrate on getting good clean water in your system. All the, you know, the healthy things that uh, we all try to do, good probiotics, good nutrition, good anything green, okay, good green drinks. I mean, this is a timeout for all of us in dentistry, but maybe it's a timeout that we can focus uh, on our own health and wellness for yourselves and your families at this particular time. That's for sure. So it's longevity. You can call it the ozonegenerator.com. And uh, it's L-O-N-G-E-V-I-T-Y uh, resources. And uh, their phone number, well, their address is, if you can get this, is Longevity Resources, Suite A, 2412 Beacon Avenue, Sydney, British Columbia, Canada. And that's V8L1X4. You're going too fast. Hold on, I got Suite A. 2412 Beacon Avenue. That's all you need to know. No, okay. Sydney, S I D N E Y, B C, Canada. And I guess their zip is uh, V 8 L 1 X 4. And um, their phone number international, well, you can call them direct because it's US, is 1 877 543. 3398. And I'll send Roger, Roger, who is the owner of the company, a little note that if you guys call, to make sure he directs you to the right, uh, the right unit on that itself. And they're very supportive. Can I ask a, another question? There's a few of us that have uh, either spouses or loved ones that can't get masks and uh, like the jackets and things. Can you discuss using the ozone to try to sanitize things by putting it in a bag and then running gas in there? Correct. <laughs> well, when we get back to work, I mean, it's going to be issues as far as sanitation is concerned. And uh, so what you can do is very easily either get, you know, a large Tupper, Tupperware container, uh, put a little punch, a little hole, slip a silicone tube in there. You can put a mask in there. And within, I'm telling you, within five minutes, that, that mask or clothing, whatever the case may be, is completely sanitized. There's no two ways about it. If anybody wants to email me, I can send them the protocol for managing your office also, because it's very critical that now for a while, when you finish working, you better ozonate your damn office. And that's very simply done with your ozone generator. And uh, I have the protocol for that. And... Um, but yeah, ozone is so effective against any kind of uh, these pathogens. And once again, whether it's a virus, fungus, bacteria, even parasitic forms, you know, the studies are, are deep. There's thousands and thousands of articles and research 
showing that, especially I'm very involved with the water companies of the world and those in eating in that world. And they've done a ton of work as far as uh, infections. I mean, one of the research projects I'm working on now at the University of Arizona is Legionella in dental units. We've, you know, this is one of the big problems is, uh, you know, having these kind of pathogenic forms in dental units. And uh, so we're doing some research on that. And obviously it's going to roll into viruses, you know, also. But um, so once again, you actually can fumigate your office at the end of the day. Uh, the longevity units do have uh, timers on them. And what the timer does is basically you, you start it up and for X amount of time, you know, you'll be generating ozone. So in a large office or a law office, you don't need, you know, you don't need ozone generators all over the place, just a couple of them. And, uh, or one actually, I should say, forgive me on that one. And, uh, and turned it on for 20 minutes. And what I would do is just crank it all the way up, turn it on for uh, 15, 20 minutes, at a, let's say half liter per minute. You don't need tons of gas to come out, you know? And then what will happen is the unit will shut off producing ozone and then just oxygen will flow and go back in a half an hour, you know, and your office is, uh, is perfectly clean at that particular time. So that's critically, critically important also. And if I can uh, ask another thing, I don't sure. mean to be the person asking all the questions, but um, oh, go away. Um, nasal insufflation, if someone starts to cough, could you go over what they need to do? Yeah, what's important about nasal insufflation is that when you're doing that is you're bubbling the ozone through olive oil, okay? You're converting it to what's called a triozonide, okay? Triozonide where basically you're bonding that singlet oxygen, the ozone, onto a fatty molecule that's bubbling through and becoming aerosol. And what happens is when that aerosol goes in, that triozonide of oleic acid goes in, it's non-irritating, okay? And once it gets down to the alveolar labor level, that singlet oxygen is released and you get all the beautiful peroxide stuff, which is so critically important with this weird virus itself. Now, once again, it's not the volume of the gas that counts, okay? It's just basically it's the concentration and time. Now, what we normally do in, in train doxin is basically all you need is a quarter liter per minute, the flow rate, so it's not a ton of flow rate, but adjust the instrument that you're producing high 20 micrograms plus. Now, if they start coughing or something, check your olive oil, make sure the olive oil is fresh. If the olive oil is fresh, and the little trap in the dental, the dental ozone unit, you know, if that's fresh, you won't get any respiratory problems either. So, you know, if they do cough on that, that means they got some kind of infection going itself. So once again, always check the oil. You don't need more than a quarter liter because a lot of times you crank it up to a half or one liter, you think I'm doing more. What's happening is the ozone will not have time to convert to an ozonide and that will tend to be irritating itself. Now, another trick that uh, we teach, which I learned in Vienna, was direct ozone in the, in the nose itself, in the sinuses. Now, this technique, I mean, it's incredibly effective for chronic infections of the sinuses, because once again, I mean, you know, you have to let, I always tell everybody as these things that come to my mind now, is that ozone does the thinking for you. Well, what does that mean? Basically, ozone carries a certain electrical charge, which is a negative electrical charge. Infection, inflammation, the things that we're dealing with today tend to have a positive charge. So once you can choose the oxygen ozone into these areas, it will seek out these positively charged areas and go where they have to go. So a, tech, a direct technique like this is basically what you do for yourself is just, you know, you load up a syringe, let's say a 10 cc syringe of 20, micro plus, uh, 20 plus micrograms of oxygen ozone. And then what you basically do is breathe through your mouth, practice just breathing through your mouth. And as you're breathing out, just slowly infuse the oxygen ozone up into your sinuses, up into your nose, up to your, you know, your nose, and then just continually breathe through your mouth. Within 20 minutes, I'm telling you, First of all, no virus could possibly survive that. But number two, if you have any kind of sinus issues themselves, 
that will break down and drain out. Within 20 minutes, and most patients are, are draining dramatically because ozone also breaks up biofilm itself dramatically. And no matter what's in that biofilm, because you gotta get through biofilm, even with these viruses, you gotta get through the biofilm to get to the, uh, the viruses themselves. Okay, and uh, another thing, talking about fans and vitamin C. Repeat that again, I'm sorry, for vitamin um, C. Can, can you talk about the use of a fan and when oh. it's appropriate to use vitamin C if someone's coughing? Yeah, I mean, basically, if someone's coughing, you can take, you know, like emergency or any kind of vitamin C, because vitamin C is the antidote to ozone itself, okay? So that you can take a couple of grams, give them, mix it up, and that when you take, you know, take a good hit of that, and that will uh, will neutralize that. So where the, where's the fan come in? Thank you for mentioning that. Fan comes in when you're doing ear insufflation, because remember, with ear insufflation, you're not using any oil, using direct ozone, moisturized ozone. So you want to bubble the ozone through some water or what we can do, what you do with the stethoscope technique is you can take a two by two gauze, wet it, wrap it around the cups of the stethoscope itself. And then you put the, the stethoscope in yours with wet gauze. But oxygen ozone is heavier than the air and has a tendency it can pull around the patient's eyes or nose. So a little fan, a little blowing of the fan uh, will, will push that away itself. And that will prevent any irritation. Okay, um, another question that brings to mind, somebody who is uh, concerned that it's not FDA cleared, can you go over how ozone falls into that category? Well, we have to remember that ozone is not necessarily FDA cleared, but it is, is perfectly legal because it was introduced into medicine and published and written about before the 1906 Food and Safety Act and the formation of the FDA. A number of things have been grandfathered through and ozone is grandfathered through. That's why it's so mainstream in dentistry, which is amazing to me for when we started back in capital, if you remember. And then um, and in medicine, we're seeing it widely used now. So the FDA has no issues with ozone. The only problems that ever occurred is when, number one, when people made medical claims like cancer cures, or number two, used inferior instrumentation. Now, the beauty about ozone for longevity, longevity, if you look at their website, we've gone through years of, of moving these instruments through and getting uh, ETL approvals, UL approvals, all these approvals, getting research uh, you know, clearance on these instruments and stuff. So the instruments from longevity are being used in a number, number of universities right now. And we have any longevity units in uh, universities throughout the country and dental schools and medical schools being used now. So, you know, the FDA is, it is not an issue. It's not illegal. It's nothing like that. The only problem's always been with the FDA has been uh, poor instrumentation and basically making claims. You may claim you have a cancer cure, but somebody will either kill you or lock you up one or the other. And uh, the only problem we ever had uh, in dentistry was we had a dentist out in California that was bringing Chinese units in, we took our lectures, was teaching off them, and had the dentist actually taking ambient air units and plugging oza of pure oxygen into them. And the FDA crashed down on them. And what was happening with those units, um, were they catching on fire and exploding? You know, we, I, I think they were called the Nolly units or something like that. So those were, uh, that dentist had to, uh, number one, kind of surrender his license, but number two, had to do a recall on those instruments. You have to do things, and we've done this that's why after this is 21 years I've been doing this now from when we started. And uh, instrumentation is critically important, playing by all the rules. And we've been very open right from the beginning with the FDA, Health and Human Services. We did Institutional Review Board. We did all the homework. And that's why you see OZO so widely used in dentistry today and uh, without any hassles from any kind of agencies, et cetera. So, you know, you don't fear that that's not FDA approved. It's been grandfathered in and a non-issue as of, as of today. The only, like I said, the only thing that's been an issue 
is the instrumentation. We've, we've gone past that at this point, which is good news. Okay, so Phil, we have a couple of hygienists that uh, have their own practices and, and ozone can be used in all the ways you just discussed, but it can also be um, insufflated into a pocket through just a, a little tip. Can you go over that just briefly? Sure. I mean, um, you know, for hygienists that we've trained, I don't know how many hygienists, I mean, ozone becomes their mainstay. All the chemicals, all the weird stuff, they can just toss out, out the door. Perion soft tissue management with ozone is absolutely incredible. I mean, we go through a process where we know the properties of ozone. We irrigate the, uh, all the pockets first with ozonated water, and that breaks up the biofilm. A lot of wonderful research behind that. So we irrigate the pockets with ozonated water. Then do all the mechanical work, you know, the, you know, the curatage, et cetera, the scaling. But then we irrigate it again. But then the real, where the real rocket fuel comes in is when you, from the, like a dental handpiece we've designed, actually goes down the pocket. You can bubble the oxygen ozone gas down into the pockets areas themselves. So what happens is, is that number one, you're disinfecting the pocket. You're getting the, the microcirculation functioning better. But another interesting aspect is the fact that you're also desensitizing the roots of the dentition. It's absolutely amazing how any kind of hyper, hyper type of root, temperature-wise sensitive root, can be desensitized by ozone permanently in 60 seconds. So the typical periodontal treatment, you say, oh my God, I can't drink ice cream, you know, have ice cream or drink something cold, that is eliminated by this particular technique. Other than the disinfecting properties, the circulation issues, the immune modulation in there, uh, also that, that beautiful effect of desensitizing those roots occur. So we kind of go through that, and there's different infusion techniques because you can actually directly infuse gas. The only thing you ever inject, and we do a lot of injections with ozone, is oxygen ozone gas because it, once again, the physics allow it to go instantly into solution and produce all the cytokines all the nitric oxide, all those, you know, peroxides that we love so much. So uh, let's say a hygienist that has her own practice, there would be no problem with her buying her own piece of equipment. No. Not like she has to be a dentist or a physician in order to purchase no, we, one you of know, these. Up in Maine, I mean, I spent a weekend up training the, uh, the Maine Hygiene Association, all the, all the ladies up there. And they have, uh, the vast number of them have private practices up there. And there's no issues associated whatsoever. I just recommend getting the training because we train our hygienists as we train the dentist. We want them to know the real science, get a full appreciation for what it does and the application. Because what you start utilizing in the ozonated water, the irrigation, the infusion, all those techniques, it becomes just a critical aspect of your practice. I mean, it's a really a paradigm shift um, in dentistry. It's, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Our hope is that actually ozone becomes so normal that it is the standard of care in every dental office. Right. And I tell you, we've uh, trained now probably over 20,000 dentists worldwide. And, um, and I just I look back over 20 something years and I'm just surprised and uh, amazed like holy smokes from when I was introduced to it from if you remember Dr. Doug Hutto a naturopath yeah and the way I was introduced to ozone we were doing he came in one day and he says well we're going to do ear candling and ozone treatment and we're like well what the hell is that <laughs> and basically ear candling is an old technique that's been around for centuries where you take basically the thing that looks like a candy cone uh, you know paper stick it in your ear and light it up. It creates a heating vortex and, you know, treats your earaches or whatever. But then he also had this little ambient unit with a stethoscope attached to it. And he says, okay, now we're going to ozonate. And I'm like, okay, I think ozone, that, won't that kill you? But of course we, we did it and it didn't kill us. And uh, what amazed me was that, you know, about an hour or so later, it's like I'm sitting around with, uh, you know, dental friends of mine. We're all like, man, you smell ozone? Yeah. And I, Oh my god, I think it's coming out of my skin. So, you know, I was like, holy smokes. I go back, I see Doug Hutto. I said, Doug, what's with this ozone stuff? I said, you know, any science behind it? And at that time he hands me 
Renata Vibon's book on medical application of ozone. It was incredible. I mean, all the uses of ozone, it's just amazing. I'm saying, my God. I said, they're dealing with infection, they're dealing with inflammation, they're dealing with trauma with ozone. Why the hell aren't we using this in dentistry, which is our world? So I was able to get that book and then, uh, you know, studied it and basically, uh, you know, basically developed the protocols from the medical aspect up through the dental component to where we are today. And Renata Vibon, who's like really one of the mothers of uh, ozone therapy, is a very dear friend of ours. And uh, so it's, uh, you know, here we are today. We have some kind of good set protocols. We have very advanced protocols for dealing with neurologic pain, deep infection, cavitations. I mean, pre preconditioning patients, if you have to do cavitational surgery. I mean, we have a multitude of different protocols uh, for the, with ozone because it works so darn, darn well. And, uh, and patients, I'm telling you, it's amazing the amount of patients that are looking for ozone dentistry. It's amazing all over. And all my dental friends that I've trained, God knows how many, like I said, 20,000 plus now, they're all very, very busy doing, doing ozone therapy because, because every aspect of dentistry as you can see, once you're trained with it, really has some aspect of uh, ozone to it. Because we're dealing with, you know, we're kind of dealing with, dealing with the bugs all day long. And, you know, when, the whole day, I can tell you all the other attributes, but, uh, you know. And, and why are, are traditional physicians so completely against having this where they could deliver a therapy? Uh, for instance, in the ERs or at primary care physicians offices well it's because of lack of knowledge they just don't understand it and they're not willing to understand it and it just doesn't fit within the pharmaceutical model itself and the early on when uh, where ozone was commonly used in hospitals commonly used in physicians offices in the united states when uh, the advent of antibiotics came along this is where all of a sudden ozone was a bad guy up to that point it was the wonder thing and, uh, you know, when antibiotics came along, the, uh, the formation of the American uh, Medical Association, um, they poo-pooed ozone because it didn't fit their model of pharmaceutical-based dealing with, anti you know, antibacterials. And we're paying the price, obviously, for that now because of all the, you know, and, you know, all the, uh, you know, type of uh, anti antibiotic-resistant type of pathogens out there. But there's nothing resistant to ozone, which is good. So, physicians, you know, we have the American Academy of Ozone Therapy, and um, I got to tell you, there's a wonderful number of physicians involved with that, many, many dentists, physicians, veterinarians, um, and it's becoming more and more. And in, in New Jersey alone, we probably, it doesn't sound like a lot, but we probably have maybe a dozen or more physicians that are doing uh, major order hemotherapy, injections, all kinds of things here. And you can find them out through the United States. If you go on the AAOT site, it's aaot.us. You can find the uh, list of physicians that um, are doing this in the United States. So it's a lack of knowledge. You know, it's always wonderful when they say, you know, I have patients coming, oh, I spoke to my dentist about using ozone. He says, oh, that doesn't work. And, you know, well, what does he know about it? Nothing, but it doesn't work. So you know how that goes. Right. Can you... Um I know that this year's conference got canceled, uh, but it, I, having been to one of the ozone meetings before, if you've never been before, there's it's three tracks, which is amazing. Schallenberger puts it on, but there's a dental track, there's a physician's track, and there's a veterinarian track, which is really interesting that the vets know more than traditional physicians about how ozone's being used. It's absolutely amazing. And, reconstructive joint therapy and all kinds of things. Yeah, I mean, I use uh, ozone on my dogs all the time, you know, do rectal insufflation on them. Keeps them super, it's a crazy, sounds crazy, but keeps them super healthy. They're not happy at times about it, but they are, <laughs> but it does work. I mean, you know, when you got to keep bulldogs healthy, it's, it's a trick, believe me. But yeah, I mean, the AOT meetings are wonderful. It's collegial. Um, you know, what's important is that we're educating those functional medicine, those type of physicians on the implications of dentistry. Because as you well know, you know, you can do all kinds of wonderful things, you know, nutrition, detoxification. But if you have chronic infection and periodontal issues in the head and neck, forget it. You're constantly reinfecting the entire body. You know, there's no separate pieces to us. The body doesn't understand that. 
So there are no barriers in the human body. So if you don't clean up your old cavity in the head and neck, you know, it's, you're going to get partial results. And this is why it's great to have that group of physicians and dentists and veterinarians all working together. Pretty amazing. Now, I know that you're not able to give classes right now because of the lockdown, but could you explain to us, for instance, I know that uh, when I saw you, you came into Bill Glaris's office, so you have a host office, and then you have so many other people that come in. Can you describe what that is like and what the cost is? Yeah, basically what we do is uh, either we ha I have it home in New Jersey, which we're having, a, I'm doing a very small course in Ozone in June, but um, we, we typically, let's say more, more typically, the, uh, we'll go to, we'll have a host office. And that host office, could be around the country, it's been everywhere. And basically, we, we go to that office, uh, we only take eight students at a time, okay, including the, uh, the host. And the host's responsibility is basically to use their office, have a reception area where we can do the lectures, have clinical aspects, which is a lot of hands-on stuff. And... Um, and provide us with breakfast and lunch both days. We host a dinner on Friday night. And the fee for the host is zero. There's no fee for you. But the typical student, the fee is $2,750 for the weekend. And uh, that, of course, includes all the USB keys and uh, all the information that we provide. And it's two full days. Two full days. And uh, you got me for those two days. So what's important for me is that by the time I'm done teaching on Saturday night that you feel extremely comfortable uh, with going home and doing the ozone because you really want to do it. I mean, we spend the first day making you an ozone therapist, you know, go through all the basic science applications. And then what we'll do is we do what's called instrument orientation. We'll work and play with the ozone dental unit itself and we'll treat each other. We'll do nasal insufflation. We'll do ear insufflation techniques. And we'll do all that so you're comfortable setting up the instrument and knowing how to manipulate the gas flows, et cetera, for the different procedures. And then on uh, Saturday, I call it the Dental Mental Day, where we go through all the fundamentals of dentistry, perio, oral surgery, caries arrestment, how to fix a, a caries exposure, root canals, woohoo. And, uh, you know, so we go through all the aspects of dentistry, how to put ozonated water in your dental units. Uh, infusion techniques, uh, show you some other tricks. I, you know, one of the things I always would teach is that minor autohemotherapy technique, which is wonderful, like I said, for herpetic lesions, peri advanced periodontal disease, any kind of chronic infection. It's good for your health and wellness because you can actually, if you have seasonal allergies, you can eliminate those things using that simple, simple technique. So we make it as comprehensive as possible. And then down the road, we do have an advanced course but that uh, is a little bit different. You have to spend some time getting the basics down, but these are deeper type of infusions for chronic head and neck infection, uh, cavitational problems, and, and deeper issues within the oral cavity in the head and neck area, trigger point injections, temporal mandibular joint stuff. So that's more advanced techniques. But uh, we, all the general aspects of dentistry is really taught in the first course. And I'm yours for two days. I mean, you know, we give you AGD credits. AGD recognizes ozone therapy. And uh, that was one of our big hallmarks. And now it has to be down 2006 that uh, the AGD had it own, its own uh, code for ozone therapy. So that pretty much brings it mainstream. I forgot to mention that. That's uh, code 162. Okay. So that was pretty exciting a number of years ago. And if somebody gets in touch with longevity now and they, they get a unit, of course, they haven't gone through a course yet, but they're locked in and they want to, you know, start doing some of these things for themselves and their family. Will longevity walk them through connecting the oxygen tank and all the pieces? Are there videos? Yeah, there are. Um, within the, the kit itself comes a, a catalog, uh, not a catalog, but basically a how-to to set up the unit itself. And if anybody has a problem, they can always email me and I can send them a, a copy of a couple of slides. And I'm having, a, I'm working on a video right now on setting up the dental unit itself to make it easier for everyone that, uh, you know, haven't made the course yet. So it's, okay. it's relatively simple, but, uh, you know, I can help or uh, longevity certainly will have the, uh, the manual 
uh, inside the kit itself. But if you're going to buy the dental thing, make sure you get the dental ozone kit. Okay, if you're going to move into that direction, because then the dental ozone kit has everything you could possibly want to do dentistry in it. Okay, versus buying pieces uh, pieces here and there. When I mentioned before the EXT 150, that's kind of like your home unit. Okay, a home unit for doing rectal insufflation or Another wonderful technique is doing ozone steam baths. I mean, ozone steam is amazing. You know, you have a steam tent or whatever the case may be, you can actually put ozone at the same time. And that's an amazing lymphatic detoxification procedure. And that's good for dentistry because of the heavy metals and stuff. But, um, but if you're gonna move forward, you know, just don't buy a unit. If you think you're gonna use in dentistry, get the dental ozone kit. You know, but the best is to get the training. So hopefully we'll be back. I'm supposed to be have a course in the second week of this of May in Denver, but that you know that was all sold out. But uh, I don't know if that's going to really come off. That's going to be close to the wire on that. But I do have a. Um, I'm only taking four four people in June at my office in Saddlebrook. And if you want to look for future courses, is uh, what's called ozonecourse.com. Ozonecourse.com. And that's basically an offshoot of longevity. And uh, they list all the courses on there. So it's ozonecourse.com. And that can keep you up to date. Or call my office. Uh, you know, if you want my office number, it's 201 587 That's 201 Or my email, my direct email is M-O-L-L-I-C-A at gmail.com. Dr. Phil Mollick at gmail.com. And Anyone I put, can help you. Go ahead. I put that, uh, all those uh, up here on there. Uh, okay. That didn't make sense. I, I put your ozonecourse.com, your office phone number, and your email on here. Do you really want people emailing you, or do you want to send me something uh, as far as, like, the protocols that I could just tag on to this? Yeah, what I'm going to send you, Dawn, is the, uh, the you know, our, our basically are re-entering the, dental, the uh, dental world protocol. So I'm going to send you that, how to uh, be safe in the dental office and the, uh, the uh, sanitation technique uh, using ozone for your office during this critical time and after this, because we don't know. You know, this is unfortunately not a situation where there's a green light, a red light. Uh, we're going to be in this yellow zone for I don't know how long because we, you know, how the hell do you identify someone that has COVID or not? You don't know. It's no. like HIV. How the hell do you know? You don't. So we have to be extremely cautious because the problem here, this is a respiratory transmitted virus and it's easily passed along. That's the problem. So we have to be extremely cautious in these particular areas at this time. But I will happy to send you that protocol once we're done tonight. I was just trying to eliminate you having, being overwhelmed with uh, emails. So if I have that up there, then maybe that'll save a little. That's uh, fine. I really appreciate that. I'm good at the delete button, no, Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, I want to thank you for, for coming on. Uh, Phil's a great instructor. He's a scream to listen to. He's not been so funny tonight because it's a very serious topic but he can make learning incredibly fun. So Thanks. if you've ever taken any of his classes before, and he's got a sidekick with him, so we need to plug Robert Harris. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Robert's the straight guy with the two. Well, oh, that makes you sound gay. Okay. Anyway, great. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I have five kids and four grandkids. I, I, I stayed straight, sorry. Hi, Bill, you hear me, Bill? I'm glad to see you, Bill. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, All We're going to finish our recording for tonight. Thank and you. And this should be up by tomorrow in the afternoon. So you guys be looking for it. And again, I want to thank you so much, Bill, for, uh, for making this welcome. available for Good us. Good luck. Everybody be safe, please. Yep. We're going to change dentistry. Yes, ma'am. Good night. Good night. <laughs>